Hello and welcome, I'm Nafe42 and in this video I'm just going to talk about 10 apps that you need to install on your new install of Linux Arch. These are just kind of like more useful day-to-day -day apps. Things that you might not have heard of that can help you do tasks that you could have done on Windows. Now these are ones that aren't command line based, they're all GUI based uh, programs to make an easier transition to people who were predominantly Windows based software. So I'm gonna start off with Arc. Now Arc is just a archiving tool. It allows you to put things into files um, and it also allows you to extract things from files. Now you can do this in conjunction with the Nemo, which is why I use, which is another one that I'll talk about a little bit later on. But yeah, with this, you can just essentially just extract files. If you're on Linux right now, you should probably know what a zip file or what these kind of things are, what the archive files are, because you've probably used them already. Now there is command line ways of doing this, but I, when you're in the GUI, well, I'm running Cinnamon right now, I believe, um, it is nice to just have one to go along with that. Uh, and there isn't one pre-installed with Cinnamon, um, so I just, I installed this one, and this is one that I quite like. Next up is Calculator. So Calculator is actually just, a calculator. Funnily enough, Windows um, installs with a calculator, as you'd expect. Linux doesn't. Linux gives you, Arts Linux specifically, will give you the bare minimum that you need in order to run um, whatever it is you tell it to run. <laughs> um, so a calculator isn't usually part of that, but what you can do is you can install this one, which I believe was Kcalc. We'll have to check here. This is the GNOME calculator, so it would be um, I believe the name of it was just gnome-calc or calculator or something like that. Um, and then once you've installed that, you've got a little calculator that you can use. If you press the calculator button on your keyboard, which I don't have, or set up a shortcut for, which I believe I have done, but it's not working. So <laughs> I'll have to look into that. Yeah, so next up was Discord. Now I have Discord open already. I'm not going to show you Discord because you probably know what Discord is. Um, Discord is a great app for talking to people online, for joining communities and things like that. You already know what that is. Um, beware that on Linux, uh, specifically Arch Linux, it does sometimes update before it updates through Linux. So um, sometimes you'll get the latest version of Linux, which you can do by going to onto here, go sudo pacman syu um, to update your system to the latest version of stuff, and it will um, have the update for Discord in here. Um, but you can't, it doesn't update through the program itself, it updates through this. So I'm not gonna do that right now, just in case it messes anything up. But that is just something to keep in mind when you do use that. Now Firefox is another one that I use very regularly. I've set the key, the hotkey to Windows F or Arch F, where we're on extra key F. And what that does is it just brings up my directory thing. Now this is uh, on Dashi, um, and I am actually looking at the moment to switch over to Homar, um, because apparently Homar, you can do loads of stuff with called, like Home Automation, you can get loads of more information, and it can also integrate with a lot of different apps. And all of that kind of stuff happens very easily. Now that's not actually what I'm talking about here. I'm supposed to talk about um, Firefox. Now Firefox is very easy to install, as most of these things are. You just win our oh sorry T for terminal, um, which is one that I will bring up later anyway. And you go sudo pacman s y uh, well s Firefox enter, and then you type in your password. And it will install Firefox. There you go, it's already installed. But then that's how you install Firefox. Now that's a lot easier than going to the internet, going to Edge, going to Chrome or whatever, typing in Firefox, finding Firefox, getting the right download, making sure it is the 64-bit version of the program, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff, which you used to have to do. Now the next one that I want to talk about is called LeafPad. LeafPad. Now LeafPad is just a notepad alternative. Um, you have to turn on word wrap uh, in here. I think it does might remember that next time, hopefully. Um, but yeah, you can just do that the same as the last one. Just type in sudo pacman s leafpad and you got leafpad. 
Uh, Leafpad is very useful. Um, it's very good for just typing out general stuff that you would usually do. I, I take notes on this type of thing. Um, I prefer to use uh, Notepad because it's just plain. It's a very nice basic thing. There's not too much getting in the way of anything. You know, you can just you can just full screen it. You can take notes, uh, or you can lock it to the edges as with this cinnamon comes a natural thing for you to be able to click things to the edges of other things next up is nemo now nemo i did mention earlier this is nemo um so this is a file browser that you can have um that comes actually pre-installed with um cinnamon so this is actually a really good file browser this is one that allows you to um, have your things up here you can you can create bookmarks and stuff like that um, and you can add um, the bookmarks can be network areas things like that so it's very good to have that uh, if you want me to do a video on how to set up network storage and have that linked directly to your machine um, through uh, fstab or fstab in the etsy file um, then let me know and i will do something about that uh, in the comments below next up is steam now steam we all know steam this is steam um i love steam steam's great it's a uh, good really good software um it allows you to download games it um assists you in running games on steam um and you know it, it's really good for there's also the, the linux button which shows you games that are good for linux and out of my library which is very large <laughs> i will say it is very large i have 831 um of them can play on steam is that right 833 yeah 831 out of 8 for 8 through 3 can definitely or kind of run on steam to be fair i think that is probably because under here uh, in the settings you can go to compatibility and in compatibility you can have it so that it enables steam play for all other titles which means that it will allow pretty much everything to run under steam um for you which is very useful um and what it does is it will just force itself onto that engine to try and play it as if it was a windows one but it um yeah it, it loses the ability to look for um the native linux ones uh, native, nat native Linux installs essentially. So some of these will only install the Windows version. I've installed Microsoft Flight Sim. I really enjoy that game. <laughs> um, I've got Build and Simulator. I've got Hell Divers, which works perfectly fine. For Hell Divers, I did have to put this in the launch options, but once I did that, it worked perfectly fine. Um, and yeah that's steam i mean you know what steam is most likely hopefully anyway so lutris is a, a game installer on linux for assisting with other types of games now sometimes um you need to have a bit more modification ability for games i don't actually have it in here as i just realized i previously used to run minecraft through here you can use games in here that are basically just windows games um, and it allows you to do the full customization when it comes to the back end of wine. Wine is the is the oh it's there. Wine, wine is the special layer that Steam uses um, to create Proton. So there's a lot of things that they've kind of cooked into it to allow wine to work really well. There's a custom version um, GE, which I believe is Glorious Egg Rolls. Um, which allows you to play games and it's like a custom um, community-based effort of allowing the games to run properly very useful very good and a lot of people have uh, had some really good success through that in order to get games to run as expected now another one which is very useful and can be very good is spectacle now spectacle doesn't come pre-installed on this on this system but what this does is it allows you to take screenshots you can see that it allows you to then take screenshots of active windows or screens rectangular region so rectangular region allows you to do the old snipping tool type thing you can just um there's annotation tools that you can add in um 
all these types of things. But you can also set, hopefully this is actually still recording, I'm not actually sure. We'll cancel that now, cancel that. Cool, uh, and you can actually set it to work as a hotkey. So I've got mine set to Windows uh, Control S, I think, Windows S. Yeah, Windows S, and it does the snip tool, and you can just do that and take a snip. Now that snip will also go straight into your clipboard, so you can do it just as in Windows when you do Windows Shift S to take a snip of the screen. Uh, you can take a little square snip, and then you can paste it into Discord to someone to show them how things work, or into uh, WhatsApp, which is also on here, to show them how things work, or... <laughs> Um, even onto some websites allow that kind of stuff now. So that's that. Final one on the list is actually the terminal. So for me, Windows T, um, this is the terminal and this actually allows you to do some pretty high level stuff. I'm not gonna show you any high level stuff right now, but it does allow you to do that kind of thing. It allows you to make deep changes. You can install programs, you can uninstall programs through uh, Pac-Man, which is the program that they use in there. Package Manager is what that stands for. Um, and you can also use Yay, which is another package manager, which allows you to use more um, things from the community. Um, there's so much out there when it comes to Linux, when it comes to using Arch Linux in particular to allow you full flexibility with anything that you want to do. Finally, I just want to talk about defaults. So in Windows, you can search defaults, I believe in, in Start menu, and it will show you the default list of programs that open with certain things. Um, I do like having a mail client to be fair, but I don't have one installed right now. If I did, I'd choose Thunderbird. Multimedia, did I not say VLC? VLC Media Player is a media player that allows you to play pretty much anything. Um, and it installs through Pac-Man as well. So that's really good. You can use Firefox as a way to display that. Uh, VLC you can use to play videos and music. Uh, and there you go. That's cool. So yeah, for everything else, we've got LibreOffice, Firefox, source code, Stream Deck, which is kind of strange. It's not actually, it doesn't, that doesn't work, but it's there for some reason. Um, file Manager, I've got Nemo, LeafPad, Calculator Terminal, and these are the programs I just spoke about anyway. So that's why I spoke about them. These are these are very useful programs to have. LibreOffice is also very good um, if you want to use that. There's a couple of different ones out there. You've got OpenOffice, LibreOffice, I can't remember if WPS works on here as well. You you have um, web-based versions instead, like um, Google Docs, that kind of stuff. Um, Office 365 as well is web-based, but it will still work web-based on Linux. Um, and yeah, that's probably about it for me for now. Um, sorry if I've gone on for a bit long. Um, it's been a great video actually. I've, I've really enjoyed talking about all these things and I feel like I'm getting back into it. I need to start making some more videos because it has been a little bit of time since I last did that properly. Um, but yeah, hopefully I will talk to you again soon. I will, um, yeah, leave a comment in the, in the comment section below if you want to add any extra softwares to the list that I need to have because I don't have everything um, that's good. But I am always looking for ways to improve my Linux experience and also to pass on information on how to improve your own Linux experience as well. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.